Hi there, I'm Bishra, aka Are You One or Zero, and I've been working on a hacking hub video series to help sharing my knowledge with the community. As part of this series, I'm also excited to kick off a new element of the project that I'm calling Exploring the Human Element of Hacking. In this series, I'll be interviewing security pros to learn more about who they are and how they get into hacking. For my first episode, I talked to security legend Dave Kennedy. Check it out now. Thank you so much uh, for your time today. I really appreciate your time. Um, and let me start giving you an intro of who am I? What am I doing? What are we doing here today for this call? What's the purpose of this call? So that we can start all talk. Uh, we, we can start talking about all you. So I'm Bishra, aka RE1 or Zero, and I'm an offensive security researcher and a pentest architect at Cobalt.io. Uh, who am I is basically a female hacker who is super passionate about hacking. Um, and uh, I'm holding three offensive security certificates, OSCP, OSWP, and OSCE. And since I get OSCE, I couldn't stop doing binary exploitation. It's like a signature of me right now. Uh, I found a zero day, I'm writing exploits. And besides that, thank you, I'm working at Cobalt. And besides that, I'm also a freelance pen tester at Cobalt. So what I'm doing is pen test, writing exploits, finding zero days, and uh, basically this is who am I. But it's never enough for me, I always want more. So I come up with this idea to create another project, another intense thing in my life <laughs> besides what I have already. Uh, I know that sharing is caring and I have quite a lot of in knowledge and infosec. You know, I, I, I know info, um, I know pen testing on web, mobile, uh, internal pen test. I worked as a consult consultant before. I'm also writing exploits. So I thought, why not sharing it? I'm not getting extra money out of it. I'm not getting extra anything out of it, but I just want to share with people how to start pen testing, how to do pen testing, you know? And so I come up with this idea uh, and I'm doing it under the hood of Cobalt at the moment. So what I'm doing is basically, I divided all the categories like web, mobile, API, uh, internal network, external network, Kubernetes, pen testing, all kinds of pen testing that you can think of. And I wrote down all the findings that you can categorize for these uh, subcategories. And I am like breaking down every category and every vulnerability and creating videos and blog posts for it. Basically, I started with SQL injection, what kind of scenarios you can see for SQL injection. I'm a CTFR for years, so I know what kind of resources you can find, which are the trusted resources such as Hack the Box, uh, Portswigger, um, Pentas Lab, all these kind of amazing resources. So I, basically, I'm doing research to find the, all the scenarios that you can see for SQL injection so that you can watch my video and learn quite a lot of things about uh, SQL injection or any other vulnerabilities. Like I said, I'm not getting anything out of it, but I really love sharing my knowledge. And when I do research, I learn a lot too. And I'm also creating blog posts that can be taught of a Bible or, or cheat sheet, you know, just the payloads that you can think of for this vulnerability. And these are the two components that I'm creating, which are the technical components, but I'm also creating these interviews with amazing hackers out there like you and other people that I've already had in interviews with so that we can see the human element of hackers, you know, so that how did you be a hacker? What did you do? What are you doing? What's your daily life? These kind of stuff. So it will be a casual chat between two hackers. I'm not a marketing person. I have never done such thing before. So basically, <laughs> I can do something super stupid right now. I apologize for it if I do that. So I will start uh, stop talking because I talked a lot already, and this that's, call is all about you. That's great. <laughs> yeah, no, that your passion sounds amazing. So congratulations on uh, everything you've been able to do. I mean, I think that's the the cool part about this industry is that you know you can really start off and and you know build up on your knowledge and and your passion really drives your career forward and I think that's uh, you know a big big key concept there I know I, I also have an OSCP and OSCE and uh, the OSCE is definitely one of the hardest tests I've ever gone through in my entire life and uh, you know had a, had a had a good time with it and also kicked off a lot of micro on components there um, and so that's that congratulations on on all the accomplishments there. that's huge. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's start talking about you and and who are you? What you're doing? So let us yeah. know about yourself. Yeah. So uh, my name is Dave Kennedy. Um, I've been in the security industry now for for over 20 years. So I'm in the the older category here, uh, and uh, and it's been great. I you know I started my career off um, early days. There used to be these these games called multi-user dimensions or MUDs um, that were um, text-based games before we had you know graphics and things like that. And that's how I kind of got my foothold into computers. I I loved um, programming, and um, so I started really early on programming in C. And um, started building these games um, that, you know, used to have people and things like that playing online and uh, more like role playing games and stuff like that. 
And um, I actually did really bad in, in school. I, I used to skip school all the time just to figure out more and more things about computers, tearing computers down, building my own rigs, um, you know, uh, programming, figuring things out. And so um, I, I decided that uh, school wasn't the right thing for me. So I decided to go and join the uh, military and I scored uh, really high on what's called the ASVAP test, which is the, the aptitude test for, um, for, for, you know, like where you rank and you get certain jobs and things to that effect. And I uh, ended up uh, joining the intelligence side. Um, so I had a government clearance, a high level government clearance, um, and uh, uh, did a lot of work. And uh, they, they saw that I had a lot of computer skills and kind of homed into that. So I started getting into the um, signals intelligence and code breaking side. I also got into the cyber warfare side in its early days. Um, did two tours in Iraq for intelligence related purposes, and then um, ended up um, doing that for about five years. And then I got out and uh, uh, really focused my career on offensive security, uh, which is where I really started a lot of my um, areas of, 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 of expertise. So I started getting into exploit research uh, very heavily, um, tool building. So I wrote a number of, of open source tools. I wrote, um, there's a tool that I originally wrote, one of my first tools I ever wrote called Fast Track, uh, which was an exploitation framework for everything from like um, SQL injection to you know, um, client side attacks, uh, social engineering attacks, things like that. And then eventually morph that into um, the social engineer toolkit, which is a tool that I wrote. Um, then I started writing other tools like Magic Unicorn, the pen testers framework, Altillery, which is a defensive tool. Um, so I started getting really big on the, the tool development side. And um, I've been everything from a chief security officer for a Fortune 1000 company, or I ran an entire global uh, program to um, I started my own two companies, um, Binary Defense and Trusted Sec, which, you know, we have over 300 employees worldwide now. Um, that focuses on uh, cybersecurity. So, you know, everything from offensive security to defensive uh, monitoring and detection, we kind of do the, the whole gambit. But my whole career has always been on, on, on cybersecurity. Yeah. Some funny, funny things. I get to go and do the news um, quite often. I was just on uh, CNBC recently um, with the whole um, uh, breaking news on, uh, on FireEye and, and the uh, specific attacks on SolarWinds. I'm sure I'll be on the news today uh, later. Um, but I got to do the news media quite a bit. I've actually helped out with uh, the TV show, Mr. Robot. So I got to work with uh, Rami Malek and Christian Slater on a lot of the skits there um, that they did. And I've also been in a um, Chris Brown rap video, uh, believe it or not. So um, there was a, a, a rap video that was more on um, hacking and stuff like that. So they had me do all the code and the skits around it. And I actually got to be in the, the video itself. So, you know, I had a fun career and, uh, you know, my, my whole area has always been you know, helping out the community, um, helping out others with with knowledge. You know, when I, when I first came into this industry, it was very informal. There wasn't uh, tutorials or lessons. There was no offensive security or SANS. You know, there was no college degrees or things like that to learn. So we kind of had to build up on other people's knowledge and share information collectively back and forth, uh, which is really where a lot of, um, you know, my, my mentality comes from is trying to provide that information out there for others so that they can learn and uh, hopefully make the industry even better, you know, as, as new folks are coming in, as new folks are, are changing the direction, as new technology comes out, you know, really leading that innovation. So, you know, for me, it's always been about uh, helping other people and trying to make the world a better place. That's, that's so awesome. That was actually my next question. Like, why do you hack? But do you just answer everything yourself? <laughs> this is you so know, awesome. I'm so happy to have you here. Yeah, you know, for, for me, um, you know, I, when I got into this industry, I got really lucky because, you um, you know, in its early days, before it, there was offensive security, um, there was a group called Remote Exploit, and uh, Remote Exploit was uh, um, Mutz's, uh, Matty Erhoni, um, the original founders of, of offensive security, it was kind of like um, a small hacking group um, of people, and so I got to be really good friends with Mutz and, and the group there. I became an, uh, an admin in IRC. I helped with the um, early stage development of what eventually became Backtrack, and then eventually became, you know, Kali Linux, um, so I was on the Backtrack development team for a number of years. Um, I helped with the the move over from um, uh, at the time, which was Millworm, uh, which was the, the exploit research side. Um, helped with the conversion from Millworm, uh, who stroke ran that, and then converted over to Exploit DB. Um, and then I was on Exploit DB doing val uh, verification for exploits and things like that for a while. So you know, I got I got ingrained very early to a really great community. And it's funny because you know the whole offensive security concept is try harder, and that whole try harder concept actually came from the early days of IRC where, you know, people would come in and they'd be like, hey, I can't get my wireless driver to work or things like that. And our first response would be, hey, you know, a hacker is, is somebody that, that figures something out or tries to research to bring things together because it may not be documented. It may not be instructional um, out there. So see if you can figure out first and then kind of help out 
you know, with the supporting, you know, components there and try harder. And so the whole concept of try harder came out of there. And so, you know, for me, um, having that, that, that community that was always trying to help one another um, really resonated with me. And it's why I started uh, DerbyCon, uh, which is a conference out of Louisville, Kentucky, to help other people, um, you know, with, with information knowledge. It was free. It wasn't free, but it was um, open to everybody, whether you're new or brand new. There was no barriers, no, you know, rock stars that you hear about. It was really just an open community trying to share as much information as possible. And um, so charity has always been a big thing for me. Um, helping other people has always been a big thing for me and fostering community has is, is always been uh, a big thing for me. Those are kind of my three core principles for, for myself. This is so awesome. The community is so lucky to have you, seriously. I appreciate um, it. So do you remember your first hack? Is it something memorable? I remember mine was an LFI vulnerability. I was so thrilled to find it. Now I'm like laughing at my memory, but I was so excited because it was my first. So do you remember your first hack? If it's something memorable, so crazy. You know, um, I don't know if I remember my first hack per se, but I remember one of my most exciting hacks. Um, and, and I was, uh, I, I just uh, uh, came from the military side and I can't talk about a lot of the ones. My, my first hack was, was literally in the military and I'm allowed to talk about that one. Um, but uh, one of my favorite hacks that I ever did was I was working for a, a small consulting company and we were testing a, um, uh, an energy company. Uh, and uh, it was, I think it was just one, 2005. And um, I remember uh, we were going through systems and I, it was a, a really early version of Metasploit. It was like Metasploit beta, all written in Perl. It was before it had been converted to, to Ruby and things like that. And there was a, a universal plug and play exploit um, that wasn't working right. And I remember modifying it to get it to work properly with the, the appropriate opcodes for that specific operating system. And I remember getting remote code execution at the system, which eventually led us into all of the other systems there. And that was, that was really fun because it was a culmination of like three days worth of work. And, you know, you know, when you're, when you're doing an engagement, you know, you only have a certain amount of time. So three days is a lot of time to burn on a specific attack. And so it could have gone completely south where it literally yielded nothing and I got nothing out of it, but the persistence and, and uh, uh, going through things and trying to figure things out and understanding what was going on and doing something that had never been done before um, was a really huge win for me. And um, so it allowed us to get access to this one system. And from there was kind of able to spread and, and get access to the rest of the system. So it was a really big win uh, for me as things go along. But there's, there's a lot of those. I have so many fun stories of, of you know, not just, um, you know, not just direct hacking, but social engineering, physical engagements, um, you know, just, just fun stuff. And that's why, you know, I think, you know, at least for me, cybersecurity is one of the most, mo mo one of the greatest uh, uh, professions because, you know, you're literally simulating a bad person trying to hack into an organization and you literally can do whatever you want to. Like I, there was one time where we broke into a bank physically and we were able to get into the bank vault and actually take money out. Like we had bags of cash, you know, sitting there, you know, and then you had to put the bags of cash back. But, you know, like, you know, your heart's racing, you know, you got that adrenaline going, you know, you're getting, I've gotten arrested a few times, you know, all those things are just amazing, you know, cool stories that you can tell your kids that, you know, um, you can't do in any of their profession before. So it's always exciting to, to go through those. This is so awesome. Seriously. Um, so is there any new projects that you're working on lately? Because in COVID oh, time, you know, everybody started working on new projects. Some people just changed their job. So is there any new crazy projects that you're working on? So for, for right now, um, there's, uh, so I, I still maintain um, all my open source projects. I just did a, a big update to uh, Magic Unicorn. Um, so Magic Unicorn is an exploitation framework for PowerShell um, exploitation. And um, one of the big things with Unicorn and any, any tool that you release publicly is that you know, the, the antivirus companies and the, the, you know, EDR companies and things like that are going to write signatures for it. Um, so I made it a lot harder to develop signatures um, for that specific, you know, those specific versions of, of Unicorn. And um, most specifically, um, Microsoft loves Magic Unicorn. So I did a bunch of uh, um, AMSI bypasses directly into Unicorn that gets around Windows Defender uh, for AMSI providers. Um, so that's still a lot of fun. I still enjoy the, the coding aspects of things. You know, um, the pen testers framework is another one for being able to dynamically load applications um, that allow, you know, allow you to keep your tools up to date and, and, and up to speed um, if you're using other distros other than Kali. Um, so those are two, two, two of the fun projects that I've been working on. Uh, one of the ones that, that I, I'm really enjoying is um, they have an internal project. So, you know, when it comes to, to tooling, um, I definitely huge on the open source community side, but there are tools that, uh, in a lot of cases that you need to, you know, maintain that are private. Um, things that you do for your own tooling, your own weaponization, that you, so you can simulate um, adversaries. So there's a number of tools that I maintain internally that have no detections for it, um, you know, that we continue to release um, internally so that our teams can effectively work and, and do their engagements the way that they need to um, from a research perspective and everything else. So those have been some of my main, my main fun ones. But I'm also running 
you know, two companies at the same time as well. So a lot of my challenges now are not just on the technical side, but also how do you run, you know, massively growing companies that I've never done before. You know, I've, I've never been a CEO of a company running, you know, over 300 folks, uh, you know, that you, you have to care for and feed for to make sure everybody, everybody's good. Um, so that's it been in, in its own experience um, in itself and, and making sure that, you know, we maintain the top talent that we have as an organization, that we bring in awesome people, that we have programs in place that keep people, you know, we haven't lost a consultant in over two years, uh, which is awesome. Um, so those are the types of things that we, we like to do. And, and it keeps me busy. You know, my day, literally, um, you know, I try to break off my days into stuff that I have to get done um, and, and, and still making time for me to be able to code and to keep my uh, skill sharp and to get on engagements um, every so often so that I can maintain it. I just did one engagement recently. Um, it was a red team engagement. And uh, it was funny because uh, uh, we were supposed to start the engagement on a Monday. And so the week before I had some spare time. So I started working on open source intelligence gathering uh, with a couple of my other teammates on the, on the red team. And uh, we, we found so much information. It was like on a Wednesday that we asked the customer, like, hey, can we just start early? Because there's just so much here that we want to go after. And the customer was like, sure, no problem. And uh, what we what we had done is uh, we used um, Microsoft Azure portals um, endpoints to, to do brute force. And we found a bunch of user accounts that had, um, you know, weak passwords on it and did it real slowly um, and, and anonymized where we're coming from. So hard to build detections off of that. And uh, we found that there was an exposed um, Citrix environment uh, VDI environment externally, and they had removed two-factor authentication for work from home to make it less complex for individuals. And one of the accounts that we had compromised uh, was in charge of finance and had a VDI environment that directly allowed um, access to their internal network. And so we were able to pop them from the outside. And um, I wrote a tool um, specifically just for that called SQL Brute because uh, I, I was combing through, um, and part of, you know, obviously going through and hacking is understanding the environment that you're going into and understanding the systems that you're going into. And so a lot of time that I spend is, is combing through data, understanding, you know, intranet sites, file shares, what's on there, not, not actually hacking into things, but, you know, you know, understanding what, what that person is and, and what access they have from a finance perspective. And I found on one of the intranet pages, um, there was a, 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 a SQL configuration file that was stored um, in, in the SharePoint site. And it allowed me to um, get the, uh, SQL connection strings um, uh, for that. Now, the issue with that, though, is um, I was running under a, a very limited user account. It had no administrable rights over the system. And so, um, you know, you start looking at all the SQL tools that are available, and they all require you to install drivers, you know, to communicate directly with SQL. So, you know, I had an issue where I had to have admin rights to install SQL in order to communicate with the SQL server. And so I ended up writing an application tool in, in Python, and I byte compiled it into an executable, um, and then code signed it just as an additional measure to make sure and, uh, um, and allowed me to connect to the SQL database without having to have admin rights installed, which allowed me to then um, get access to the SQL server and then eventually spread into the server environment and then move laterally to, to the systems that we needed. So, you know, by, by Friday, we had full access to everything um, in the environment. You know, we, had, we, we, we technically hadn't even started the engagement. It was supposed to start on a Monday. So those are the fun ones, you know, that you get to go through that you just love, you know, because you get to be creative and come up with new things that someone hasn't done. Damn, with this motivation that I have right now, I think I will just find a zero day or something. I, I should just start working on some stuff. Oh yeah, that's the greatest. Especially when you find zero days, those are the, those are the best, right? Because you're like, yeah. no one's ever done this before and I'm the first, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So my next question is, what's your advice to new hackers? Because there are a crazy amount of new hackers coming, especially uh, from other industries. So they're always asking, DMing me about like, how to start, you know? because they are seeing me as a woman. How did you do it? Because there are not so many women in this industry. So it's a bit uh, insulting to ask me that you did it. So I can do it too, but I mean, I have 130 IQ, but yeah, of course. <laughs> so what's your advice to new hackers? You know, um, what's great about this industry is it's for everybody, right? Regardless of, of gender, race, religion, whatever your beliefs are, right? You know, it, it's a, uh, anybody can do this, this job. It's not rocket science, um, and, but you know, the biggest thing about this job is that um, it is it is a profession that that demands a lot, right? And in order to be, you know, um, proficient in your job, you know, I think initially you, you need to make this job your hobby. Um, and and that's that's what worked for me. I'm not saying this is what, what everybody needs to do. Uh, I'm just saying what, what has worked for me um, personally is making this more of my hobby. So, 
you know, um, at night I would spend time just figuring out coding and teaching myself new programming languages or, you know, doing offset, for example, and, and learning things through, through courses there or whatever was published, you know, there was frack articles and, you know, um, designs and things like that, that allowed me to, to learn and, and to, to research and to figure things out. I remember, um, uh, Egypt, I think back in 2004, maybe, um, had a frack article on, um, maybe it was 2000, it was a little bit later, maybe 2006, um, but had a frack article on, um, kind of the first implementations of, of what's now called return oriented programming for data execution prevention bypasses. It wasn't called ROP at the time, um, but it was a way of, of, of being able to um, assemble, you know, your ROP gadgets and memory by hand. There was no tools that did it for you. Um, you literally had to go hunting in DLLs to figure out memory instructions that would eventually allow you to um, disable. And it was very experimental at the time. And I remember I spent I don't know, probably two weeks going through that paper and it just racking my brain because I just couldn't understand it. And eventually I wrote a, 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 a there was a, a exploit that I was using as an experiment, it was SL mail um, at the time. And I wrote an SL mail data execution prevention bypass, which is one of the first ones that ever got released for from a depth bypass um, from an exploit perspective. So, you know, um, that type of learning is frustrating. Um, it's hard you know, you feel like you can't do it and you just got to keep going after it and get through that because, you know, your frustration means that you're learning something new that you haven't done before. And in this industry, there's so much information out there. It may seem overwhelming that you're never going to know it all. And the truth is you're never going to know it all. Uh, there's no way to know it all. I'm learning something new every single day from folks like yourself or anybody around the industry that just has different perspectives, you know, and different, different ways of learning things. And so, you know, building up your knowledge, your core foundation is really important. So, you know, for me, I think when you're getting into this industry, I do think programming is a big deal, um, especially if you're getting into the application security side, if you're getting into the, um, you know, penetration testing side or, or offensive side, even from a defensive perspective, uh, programming is a big deal, especially if you get into re reverse engineering and understanding how applications work. Um, programming is a, a key piece there. I also think uh, foundational aspects around network, uh, network communication protocols, um, RFCs, um, you know, ways that that computers interact and talk to each other, domain infrastructure and trust relationships. Um, that's why, you know, um, a lot of times systems administrators make fantastic offensive security people because they understand how their infrastructure and architecture is set up and how it can be abused. Um, programmers make fantastic, you know, um, offensive security individuals. Um, you know, computer science degrees make fantastic offensive security folks and defensive side um, of the house. So, you know, it's 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 about starting off somewhere to, to build your foundation of knowledge. And that foundation then, you know, is, is your foundation for your house and you build up on that house as things go up and there's no right or wrong, wrong way of going about it. Just know that you are going to be frustrated. You know, you're going to go into things that you've never experienced before because that's, that's what learning is. And, you know, there's a great community out there of people that are willing to share information um, to teach you and, and you just need to spend the time to go and do it. And again, for me, making it a hobby was really important for me, um, making it a, a, you know, kind of a way of life. You know, I, I'd still spend time with family. I'd still spend time, you know, having a life. Um, you don't, you, you don't want to lose your life, you know, um, just learning and always working. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. There's definitely a fine balance between it, but if you want to excel in this industry, you know, it is a very demanding industry because it's a relatively new industry and there's not a lot of established things happening. Uh, making your hobby is one of the most important key concepts that I can, I can recommend. These are so valuable and amazing advices. Thank you so much. I have one last question. Actually, this was not on the list, but I mean, I'm creating the interview, so I can sure. cheat a bit. <laughs> I want to found my own company. So since you are running two companies, so what's your advice for people like me who are hackers who are already working in this industry for a while and want to run their own company? What's your advice for people like me? That's a great question. Um, you know, anybody can run their own company. It doesn't require, um, you know, a lot. There's, there's different ways of doing it. For me, I was very much against the venture capitalist uh, getting seed money and things like that, because for me, running my own company the way that I want to on my own terms and own rules um, seemed very enticing to me. So I, I was um, I was the chief security officer for a Fortune 1000 company. I had a great job, you know, um, had a, a cushion. I didn't have to worry about my, my I had a great team. Everything was just wonderful. But it wasn't what I wanted to do long term. I wanted to start my own company. I had no idea what to do. I had no idea how to start an LLC. I had no idea how to do accounting. I had no idea how to do marketing. You know, none of that stuff. Remember that that these things will come with time, and you will learn just like you did in security how to run a business. the The best advice I can give for running a business is, you know, um, one try to have as much work lined up at first um, before you even start the business, so you can float yourself over time, or at least have a good you know, savings, um, you know, to be able to, to float yourself for a while, but having work ahead of time, 
planning methodically, you know, your website, um, how you're going to do um, PR marketing, um, you know, through, through research is a great way if you're, you know, releasing new tools, new techniques, you know, that stuff, you know, really helped build um, trust the text brand at the time uh, to, to build those up blog posts and sharing the information. So your word of mouth gets out there. You know, if you do quality work, you know, that, that quality of work will spread to others. People are gonna be like, I, I use this, you know, I use so-and-so and they were awesome. And I would heavily recommend them. They go with you. And then that, that spreads like wildfire. So if you do quality work um, and you focus on the things that you're good at, don't try to do too many things at once. You know, um, I see a lot of companies who are like, Hey, I'm going to start my company tomorrow. I'm going to be a one man shop and I'm going to do, you know, compliance. I'm going to do PCI. I'm going to do pen test. I'm going to do app sec. I'm going to do reverse engineering. I'm going to do incident response. And you won't do any of those. Well, focus on what you're really good at and, and build small and then start to eventually build your capabilities out over time. You know, having the right things like reports, make sure your reports are crisp. That's your overall product. Uh, making sure that, you know, you, you, you do things the way that, that other organizations would want to see and, and be better than your competition. Um, those are all key things that'll work. And, and, and everything else, the, the marketing, you know, the contracts, all that stuff comes over time. You know, I remember uh, my uh, early on in Trusted Sec, uh, I had no idea how to use QuickBooks. And so my wife um, started taking online accounting classes just to do the QuickBooks side of things because I had no idea what I was doing. And I also remember that um, for the um, like uh, uh, SLAs, the service licensing agreements you had, I had, I had no law firm to, to go through that. I didn't have a lot of money to, to, to spend with lawyers. So I found like a a website that had like a default SLA for consultants that I just copy and pasted literally into my, my reports originally. Cause I had no idea what I was doing. And, you know, it turns out that it was actually just for the UK and had like UK wording in there and all my customers were in the U S. And so I went years with SLAs in place that literally had nothing to do with the United States, you know, terminology. So you, know, you learn these things over time and you get better with it as you go along. You know, here's the thing. If you put your time, your passion and commitment into learning new things like building a business, you will be successful. The last thing I'll, I'll say on, on building your own business too is always have peop, the people, your people and your customers as the number one priority, even, even at the cost of profitability and time. Um, if you run through that mentality, you'll always have a great company with great people that are willing to do whatever they need to, to make whatever you're doing successful. Um, you know, we have a great culture, a trusted second binary. Um, again, we don't lose people. People love where they work at. And I always, no matter what, have the feelings of my, my folks at heart in, in any decision that I'm making. And as we've grown, you know, we came from one person, myself in the basement, you know, to, to over 300 people, you know, to maintain that type of culture is, is really important. So every decision you make has to be about culture. It has to be about your product and making sure that the quality of work that you put in there um, is important, but anybody can start a business. And I did at the basement of my house with no funding whatsoever. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't get any VC funding or millions of dollars floating in so that I can build things up quickly. You know, I, I like to start off small and, uh, you know, build from there and do things right and, and have control and granularity ways of that I can learn and do things the right way versus kind of shooting it out the door and then, you know, kind of like a cannon and you have no idea what you're doing and it's just all chaos. Um, but anybody can build a business um, and anybody can be successful in this industry if you have the passion for it. These are amazing advices. I will keep them in my mind when I go over my path. So thank you so much for your time today. If, if you'd like to add anything else, you can just go ahead. Otherwise, we can just wrap it up. I appreciate you having me on here today, um, you know, for, for everything. It's uh, great that you're doing this and, uh, you know, awesome um, just to hear your perspectives of, of where you come, uh, you've come from, you know, again, as you mentioned, there's not a lot of women in this industry yet. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's drastically changing because, you know, providing different perspectives of people. I mean, it is, is absolutely amazing um, for this, for this industry and for where we're going and where we're heading and uh, congratulations on your success and your passion. I I'll tell you those, those offensive security uh, uh, certs are not easy to go through. Um, it requires a lot of time and dedication and willpower. And, uh, you know, that, that's amazing what you've been able to accomplish so far. You know, anybody can accomplish what I've accomplished, what you're accomplishing uh, in your career. Um, you know, it's just a matter of that dedication and passion. And if you have that, you know, I'll tell you from a, from a hiring perspective, um, that's what I look for, right? I look for folks that are motivated. I look for folks that, that are willing to learn from others, um, you know, that, that are, in that community spirit, you know, people that will share information back and forth, you know, all of that stuff is, is key to success for, for who I'm hiring uh, within my organization as well. So having those traits makes it very desirable from a, from a, a recruiter or a hiring perspective um, to, to be able to get into companies and things. But you know, I wish you the best on your, on your, uh, your company idea. I know it's going to be successful. Uh, no question about it, especially if you already have that drive and passion that, that you're experiencing already. So um, thanks again for having me on here. And if you ever have any questions, always happy to help out. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to hear all of these amazing things. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you. Bye. All right, take care. You too.